So this is what I ended up with, but you're probably wondering how I got here. So lately I've been using Blender to try and get models for concepts in my D&D games. The thing is I suck at Blender, so I decided I'd do a sci-fi solar system real quick because those should be fairly easy because making a ball is a simple process. But first I wanted to decide how I'm populating this solar system, so may I introduce to you the Skites, a bug-like species that has come to life on a swampy planet which has a heavy atmosphere that keeps the planet in a warm humid environment most of the time. I went for giving them a exoskeleton and a mosquito-like head. So the exoskeleton's mostly just gonna protect them from standard wear and tear of life and act as a skeleton, but the mosquito-like head's going to be how they consume food. I was thinking they could like crush up organic matter with rocks and stuff in the tribal stage, which they could then mix in with water to consume, and now they do it with like a more milling arrangement. Everything they consume they crush up and mix into liquid. At the point we're at in the timeline, they have started space exploration, but only within their own solar system. They have not discovered any other species, and we are going to keep them insulated from humans for the purposes of this video. But moving on from the race, we have our amazing solar solar system which is three planets in a moon and it was definitely always three planets in a moon and it was never four planets that we can walk through. Starting with the second most planet from the sun we have the home world of the Skites. This planet is very swampy, it has a heavy atmosphere. It exists with a day night cycle similar to our own and its own unique biosphere. Its biosphere would mostly consist of exoskeleton creatures, with creatures that don't have an exoskeleton being fairly rare. Speculative evolution's a little weird, but generally speaking, yeah, single species that spreads into all the other species. So we're saying that one had an exoskeleton, and then the non-exoskeleton species, which I'm gonna say have two legs, is mostly just like small monkeys and rats and stuff. But they all walk on two legs and never developed a four-legged arrangement, which is why they never developed a sentient species. So this planet will be acting as our Earth stand-in. And just for the record, we are going soft sci-fi because I do not have the energy to go hard sci-fi. Now that we are done with our Earth stand-in, next we have the planet closest to the sun of the setting, which rotates with a face of it directly facing the sun. This point closest to the sun is burned into and makes like a charred land section, while the points away from it have a okay biosphere before hitting with a very cold section at the end. As a result, it does not have a day-night cycle. It's perpetually dawn during a good chunk of the planet, while the rest of the planet is either perpetually day or perpetually night. This planet will be the first space colony of the Skrites, and has a very heavy ozone layer that the Skrites basically manually added to make it habitable. So all of the plant species on the planet are placed there by the Skrites, but because the planet is such a different environment, they have started already kind of evolving into a separate kind of creature. Due to the perpetual dawn in the most habitable areas, I think this different kind of creature would, would have a second semi-transparent eyelid that they can close when facing the sun to deal with the constant dawn. I could also imagine them moving away from the sun, which I'm going to be calling south for the purposes of this video. I could also imagine them moving south most of the time, or setting up some sort of camouflage where they hide within the sun. This would be similar to how the bottom of a lot of sea creatures will be like a whitish color, because whenever they're gliding over another creature, it blends in with the sun's light. And they mostly export from that planet uranium and some other radioactive minerals to act as fuel sources. These radioactive minerals also acted as an accelerant for the uh, evolution I mentioned previously. Next we have the gas giant of the solar system. And there might be a few other planets in the solar system. I just designed the three. This one is a very heavy helium colony and what's fun about helium is if you mix electricity it glows you get that neon orange effect which i really liked so this helium planet also has a degree of weather within it that has been generating electricity 
so it glows a bright orange. Early cultures of the Sprites would often ascribe its presence to some sort of deity, which made it quite interesting because occasionally it would disappear and reappear as, as the planets tend to do, but it was much more visible on the night sky than most other planets as a result of the neon orange glow. But when they discovered their space travel technology, they found that it was filled with helium. Helium is actually very valuable for scientific research and party balloons. On Earth, it shoots out of the atmosphere if you let it release. It's getting rare. There's helium shortages that happen every once in a while. And this is just a massive source of helium that these people have discovered. So they built a man-made moon space station so that they can collect and carry the helium back to their home world. I was actually thinking that this could be a controversial move among the Sprites, you see, because it was once a religious concept of the orange planet in the sky. There might be a decent number of people that consider it quite sacrilegious to start harvesting from that planet. I also think that it could have some life forms within it. I'm picturing like kind of manta rays gliding through a neon orange atmosphere, but that's a little confusing on the biological end because helium doesn't react with anything else, which would make it pretty bad for breathing. This is their current solar system state. They are about to start expanding into other solar systems where they might encounter other creatures. That is to say, I'll make a sequel to this if the video does well.